Let's have a conversation. So this is, this is a video that I have been not looking forward to making. It's a video that I've been honestly dreading to make. Um, it's not something I ever wanted to do. And I went back and forth a lot about whether or not I should, about whether or not it was a good idea. Um, basically, what I'm gonna talk about here is, I'm gonna talk about getting disqualified in Peru a few weeks ago at the Pan American Games. I'm gonna walk you through my situation, kinda how it all unfolded. I'm going to discuss things that I've never really discussed publicly before, which is my history of being disqualified and how we move forward. I didn't want to make this because this has been really, really bothering me. Like it very much bothers me. Um, and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get into that. For those of you who watched my vlog, um, you know that I swam the 100 breaststroke, I won a silver medal. Um, I talked about in my vlog how I wasn't happy with the time but how I was just trying to enjoy the moment. And, and be happy for the experience, which I was, very much was. And then the mixed medley relay happened and we got disqualified. So w we swim the relay, we get out of the pool, we're celebrating. We knew we were gonna win the event like, and we were really excited, we're like, we were really happy to win the event. Um, we get out of the pool, walk over, walk through the media zone check in through doping control, um, get all our stuff, walk all the way back to the Team USA team area, put our, our, uh, our podium gear on, walk to the metal ready room, which is the room you sit in before you go on the metal stand. By that time, 20 minutes had passed since we'd finished the race and we're sitting in the metal ready room about to go up on the podium and no one from Team USA had been notified that we'd been disqualified, which was weird. And right when we heard, we were like, what? This is crazy. Um, they notified us like minutes before we walked out onto the podium. We run to the team area. As we're running to the team area, the team manager is running the other direction saying, I know, I know, we're going to figure this out. All while the fourth place team had already been notified and their swimmers were standing outside the metal ready room area getting ready to get on the podium because they'd been notified we'd been disqualified. It wasn't until they were handing out medals like the other teams were on the podium and we're in the, in the team room area. It wasn't until then that we were even told what the disqualification was for. Um, our head coach was never notified. He had to like run and, and ask and find out then. Like there was no notification. Pro the, the whole process was weird, okay? And when we're, when we're told that we were disqualified for me doing multiple kicks off of the turn, to me it was like, a gr you know in the movies when like a grenade goes off and you're in shell shock and everything's ringing? That's how I felt. It was like a shot to my gut. It was horrible. And in that moment, I was like, oh my God, did I, did I blow this? Did I screw this up? Did I mess up? And I was, I was freaking out. I was basically on the verge of crying. And we're sitting there and the head coach comes up a bunch with, with a bunch of other coaches and we sit down and we watch the video review with our high performance team. And we only have over, over water footage. They won't give us the underwater footage or they don't have underwater footage, I'm not sure. Why you don't have underwater footage at a meet like that, I don't know. But we watched the footage and I was assured by the head coach and by every other coach that I had done nothing wrong and that it was a BS call. And I still feel horrible in that moment. I feel terrible, but I'm being told by a number of US coaches, mind you, only one coach on that staff is an Indiana coach who would be in my corner pretty much regardless, right? Who had in invested interest in me. None of those other coaches had any reason to back me. Yet, that's what we were told. And when you watch the video, you can't see anything. And I wasn't sure because I have a little bit of a checkered history. Over the course of my career, I've been disqualified 
a lot for for a lot of things that I've been disqualified a lot and there's a there's a good number of them where the disqualification was totally valid and I own that and I accept that I'm like yep that's a that's a fair call I, I got it I accept that there is also a number of disqualifications of mine where it was very questionable and I will get into that in a minute that is due to what I call the gray area. There's a very gray area in my pullout, in the breaststroke pullout, and I'm gonna talk about that. And then I've also had some disqualifications that were just bad calls, that just should not, for, for whatever reason, and I'm not gonna dive into those as much as I wanna talk about a couple of those, I'm not going to, um, because that's not the point of this video, I, there's, there's no reason to. So let's talk about the gray area. Breaststroke is weird because it's the only stroke that really has this gray area, this questionable what is legal, what isn't legal. So right now, most high-level breaststrokers do the pullout pretty much the same way, what I call the, the modern day pullout. You push off the wall, you glide, you dolphin kick, level out, continue the glide, and then snap your arms down into an upward direction and then you break out. You snap the dolphin kick and then you glide. And at this moment, you're still moving in a parallel direction with the surface of the water. Then you snap your arms down, and that's where the gray area happens because oftentimes when you snap your arms down and shrug, there's a lift because you're carrying momentum in a parallel direction, and when you snap, that's when you start to surge upwards to break out of the water, right? When you do that, oftentimes there's turbulence, there's undulations, there's body movements, sometimes your feet drop, things can happen and it's the job of the official to distinguish okay what is actually a dolphin kick and what is just extra motion what is just extra undulation those those things happen and there's a lot of gray area in breaststroke right now and if people say that that's not the case then they're just not paying attention because it, it's out there there's a lot of it especially at high level swimming and so for me personally and some other breaststrokers out there when you do that full body dolphin and try to level out and then snap your arms down, there's turbulence. Your legs drop as you're thrusting upwards. And sometimes that is considered a dolphin kick, right? And sometimes it's so minute and faint that you don't feel it. So what I'm going to do to ensure that I never get disqualified again, to ensure that there's no gray area, right? There's no, without a shadow of a doubt, no question, I'm not doing anything legal, is change the technique of my pullout back to the early 2000s style pullout, right? Which means that I will be dolphin kicking with my pull down simultaneously, one snap, because with that technique, you push off the wall slightly at a downward position, you initiate the pull down, you snap the kick with your pull out, so it's like a slingshot, right? There's no room for, no room for extra body undulation because at that point when you finish the pull down and the kick, you're already about ready to break out. And it's, it's just a technique thing, it's just technical. And that's what I'm gonna do for literally for the remainder of my career because I don't want this to happen again. This kind of thing is 100% unintentional. I would never, never intentionally do something that would jeopardize what actually happened. We won a gold medal as a team for the United States at a very high level meet and that was taken away and that hurts more than I can't describe to you and I, I can't I didn't want to make this video but one thing that kind of tipped me over the edge to making this video was I had a number of people asking me how do I move on from this, right? How do, how do I get over this? How do you take another step after such a huge setback? You know, young kids are asking me this. Like kids are saying like, what, what do you do? Because in my videos I show lots of positivity, I show the bright side, but I also want, I want people to see my struggle. I don't want anyone to feel bad for me or pity me, that's not what I'm saying. I just want people to understand that I'm human. Right When I hear things about me, it hurts. I hate the fact that I have this reputation. 
that I have a reputation for this kind of thing. I don't like it. I wish I didn't, but I have to own it. Like I, I own it and I will wear it like armor. Okay, like I've, I've been through this before. It's happened again. I get it. And I will ensure that it never happens again by changing my technique, period. But when someone asks me, how do you move forward? I do so really in, in, in two ways. Number one, I unfortunately have experience in dealing with these sorts of things. And I don't even just mean getting disqualified. That's happened, sure, I've been through this before. But what I mean is I have experience in dealing with horrific things. I am seasoned in putting on blinders, compartmentalizing and, and blacking things out and tuning things out because I have been in positions in my life where I have been forced to do that. A lot of people don't know this, but six months before Olympic trials, I lost my father. I got a phone call on Christmas morning saying that he'd been found dead and they were looking for his next of kin. Now, I'm not going to get into all of that, but I know what it's like to be truly depressed. Like, real depression. I have actually been through that. And not just once, multiple times. I've dealt with that for weeks at a time. I remember... My freshman year of college, I was at NCAAs, the first time ever swimming it. I got a phone call at 11 p.m. that night from one of my closest friends telling me that my best friend, the f my first friend that I ever had, and my best friend growing up had died. He'd commit suicide. That hurt, and I had to swim through the meat after finding out about that. And then... In 2012, just a couple weeks before Olympic trials in 2012, I got a phone call from another friend saying another one of my best friends had also committed suicide. That was terrible. And you know, growing up, um, my dad had serious drug and alcohol problems. Serious, serious problems. And I went through some pretty traumatic things, right? I know what it's like to have zero dollars in my bank account in a very questionable future. And I, I tell you those things not because I want you to feel sorry for me. I don't want that at all. Like, I'm okay, right? I'm, I am okay. I tell you this because for those people asking me, how do I get through this? Well, I've been through horrible things before unfortunately, and I'm experienced at pushing through and moving on. And what helped me get out of some of my darkest moments, some of my deepest depressions, were, was doing things that I loved and throwing myself and forcing myself to sometimes do things I didn't want to do, like just going to the pool. I love this sport. I love swimming more than I can express to you. Swimming has helped me get through some of the hardest things in my life. Not just the things that I've told you. Far more than that. I love it dearly. I'm very grateful for what swimming has given me, the opportunities, everything. And to climb out of those holes, I threw myself into swimming. And it was self-improvement, being surrounded by people, that were positive and happy and being guided in the right direction by people much smarter than me, like coaches and mentors and teachers. And I owe that to swimming. And so how do I get past this, this disqualification, this setback, which sucks? I do it just like I've done everything else. I throw myself back into it. And I have to have a very clear mind and open perspective of, of the world surrounding me, right? I'm very aware of what people say and things that have been written about me and all of those things. Mind you, I, I will point out, 
Years ago, I stopped reading any articles that are ever written about me. I do not read those things. I certainly don't read comments that are written about me, particularly things outside of my YouTube channel. No, I don't do that. Now, I have friends, and I know people that do, and I'm aware of the things that are out there. And for me, it's like, <laughs> guys, I opened up my Twitter feed after this happened, and I had thousands of people saying horrible things about me. Horrible, horrible, disgusting, mean, nasty things. And obviously I'm human. Like reading those things hurts me. You know, reading those things, it hurts. You don't, you, you know, I, I wish that upon nobody. Like you don't want that. But after time, self-reflection and realizing like kind of what is important, I realized that like the people out there, the haters, the people that are attacking me, I feel sorry for you. Right? This is how, over time, I realized those things don't matter. Like What people comment and what people say is totally irrelevant. The only thing that matters is, is the people who support me and the people that I care about and those opinions, and that's it. Right? And so I ignore the rest of it. But I feel bad for people in today's age who are just spewing venom and hate and negativity and trying to bring other people down. Like That sucks because I feel like most of those people, like... They've never met me. And like if we met up and hung out, like we would probably get along. And and that's just and that's how it is with almost everybody. Like it's just kind of the world we live in right now. It's just it's just kind of like that. And that's okay. Like people have a right to say those things, even if they're horrible. Right? Like, I don't know why you would ever do that. So yeah. You know, I I try very hard to make my YouTube channel overwhelmingly positive because I try to be overwhelmingly positive. And I will say that. You know, the second half of Pan Am's, I was struggling. Mentally, I was in a really, really bad place. And I've said this before, you find out who your true friends are and who really cares about you in your darkest times. And you know, while I was upset with what happened and hurting, the thing that made me feel the best was giving joy to other people. So the last night of the meet, um, I packed up all of my Team USA stuff, everything that was given to me, my sweatshirts, my parka, my jackets, everything. You guys saw me unboxing all that stuff in my videos. And I gave everything away to fans, to people in the crowd. And one of my favorite things that I did all summer long was giving away my big Team USA parka to a young swimmer at Pan Am's. She was Peruvian, she was a young girl, maybe 13, I don't know. But the look on her face when I gave her my, my official Team USA parka, when I put it around her, I was in a dark moment in that spot. I was hurting. I wish that none of that had ever happened. Once again, I own all that, okay, I do. but. Giving joy to other people made me feel better. And that was one of my, and I was throwing up t-shirts. I love bringing other people happiness. I do. Like, that's one of my, one of my favorite things in the world. When we were in the stands, there were a whole bunch of kids from South America with, like, Cody Miller signs and taking photos with Allie. And I brought home a whole bunch of stuff. <clears throat> I was given, you know, postcards and and big bill bill like big paper signs and like all kinds of cool stuff and like that's really cool because it's it, it it's rare that I actually get to see the effect and the impact that I'm having on other people from the videos and, and the stuff that I make and seeing it in person it's just like it's it's it it feels nice it's it means a lot to me when people tell me that. I'm bringing them joy in, in some form or another. It does mean a lot. And in closing, I just, I wanna thank all of my supporters out there, people who have been kind to me, people who have cheered for me, rooted for me, all my viewers, everything. I really appreciate it, I really, really do. Like, I'm gonna be fine. We're already moving forward, we're, we're moving forward. <sighs> okay, I'm sweating so much. The reason I'm doing this video in my garage is because we're renovating our kitchen. My house is a disaster right now, so. Anyway, um, season three of the vlog coming soon. Everybody stay tuned. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening.